Okay, um, we have with us today Ganesh. Is that, did I pronounce it right? Yes, exactly. So today we're going to make a big switch. That mean after doing two years of French first, English after, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to do the English part first and the French part after. This way you hear what we're talking about in English. And then when you hear the French part, you can put the dots together and understand what uh, what was the topic about. And now I'm going to say in English uh, what the topic is about. So Ganesh asked me to talk about travel. And I said, OK, because I always let my guests be the boss. <laughs> so Ganesh, first of all, thank you so much for showing up today. No problem. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you showed up. It's a pleasure to always have you here. So Ganesh, um, tell us who you are just in a few words. Sure. Uh, I'm Ganesh. I live in San Francisco. I moved here a month ago. Um, I was born in New Zealand, spent nine years in Malaysia, moved to Indonesia. And I lived in uh, owned Stanford for a college and grad school, so I was there for five years, and then I moved to the city a month ago. The city? San Francisco. Okay. And do you think that was a good move? Definitely. Really? The city is an amazing place. It is. It's a good place to be. It's like San Francisco is so, in, on the topic of travel, San Francisco has so many different little neighborhoods. Yeah. That it feels like you're traveling when you go from one neighborhood to the other, even oh, though it's a short trip. that's what you like about it? I mean, that's one of the things I like one about it. The, things. the second thing is it's like all my friends are here. Yeah. So uh, everyone moved from you, college you, here. So you yeah. walk on the on mission, you find them. Exactly. And then the uh, third thing is like, uh, is this, you meet a lot of new people. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. A lot and of young people. Yeah, a lot of young people. And fourthly, it's like this love, like, like this love it grows. So you can make a job here. Like mm. this lot, you can like, it's one of the centers of innovations in the world. So that's really good to be oh. part of it. And next month, it's going to be even more young people because Google's moving in. Oh, Google's moving in? Yeah, nice. they're moving in. on. They bought the uh, 12th, I think, 12th floor on One Market Street. So it's going to be a, a whole bunch oh. of... Rent's going to go up again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why there's people But it'll be good to have Google here, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but a lot of people are protesting them coming in yeah. because of the rent situation because landlords are going to try to get rid of the old tenants <laughs> and <laughs> replace them with the Google guys. Yeah. But that's life. You cannot stop, you uh, can't inno stop Mark, innovation. Yeah. yeah. So uh, does that happen often in other cities? Or is that a particular problem of the San Francisco uh, area? I think it's San Francisco in particular. I mean, it definitely happens elsewhere, mm -hmm. but not at the same scale. Mm -hmm. Because elsewhere, I mean, it's... it's I think it's unique to software programming yeah. because it's one of the things where one person get paid good. People get paid really high. Normally, it's like double or triple, oh. but it's not like this is like quadruple, like five fold. So it's like it's it suddenly makes something very it it's it really changes the landscape. Oh. But on the, on the flip side, you have um, the, in, in, the you have workers. different you have different different uh, towns near San Francisco that are booming now as a result. Like ah. Oakland, a lot of people move to Oakland. Yeah. And Oakland's like really uh, happening. Now. It's, like, it's almost like a different neighborhood of San Francisco now. It's like yeah. it's like just as good. It's like a lot happening. Oh, yeah. okay. But do you think it's fair to the people who are who have jobs like um, I don't know at Starbucks or in a grocery stores? They can't afford the rents of of the people who are software developers or software mm -hmm. engineers. I mean, it's not, but there's not much the government can do. Like, I mean. You cannot raise too much the rents of the minimum wage people, and on the other hand, you cannot lower too much the the yeah the, you can't you can't, for, you can't yeah you can't if you have a permanent uh, low Don't. rent you're gonna have what we have now where it's just a bunch of people applying for houses yeah like right now applying for houses in San Francisco is like applying for college because you write an essay oh then you have in competition you with write other an people. essay and if, if anything is below market price even if it's market price yeah there's like Fifty people are playing for one spot. Oh, then uh, the, it's like, the, it's the like landlord college, picks. The landlord picks, and often the landlord picks the like the, the one who can pay. The one who can pay, and also not just that, but also like the one they get along best with, and it's, like, uh, it's like a long the process. The one they so, like, the yeah. one they like. So regardless, it's like it's not a situation which you could win by artificially placing prices. On like, it's uh, you can't win by artificially placing a price ceiling. Of so course, you moved with a friend then. Yeah, I think the best situation is to, for the government to have like low income housing projects, like yeah. It's in areas where yeah, you, but where it's, you in, it's competitive too. Yeah, you that's competitive apply. too. You get applied too. Yeah, so but like it, it's hard. It's like it's like one so, of those problems so which is which is like unfortunate, but it's like difficult to fix. Mm -hmm. Or or people get their foot in the door and then they bring in their friends, <laughs> like yeah. for you, for example. Yeah. 
yeah because if you're a student you're not going to compete with the worker right yeah so anyway uh, to go on to the topic of travel what do you learn when you travel mostly I mean, there's two kinds of people you meet normally. No, one is the fellow travelers, and yeah. two are locals in the city. Yeah. And it depends on what you're in the mood for. Uh. And often when you meet other travelers, you 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 often those people also travel like very widely. So really? they like, they give you a wide perspective on the area. On on the area. Yeah. They and you'll meet different kinds of travelers. You'll meet the person who's backpacking for a whole year. Yeah. Around the world, and you'll meet the the person who came from a nearby city in the same country. And oh. it's interesting to hear all these different perspectives. Oh. Like for example, when I was in Paris, I um. I stayed at some. I stayed in a hostel, and there were lots of people from all over the world. Yeah. But there were also people who just traveled from other parts of France for like mm-hmm. three or four days. Just to look fine. And then out. it's like, and you could ask them how does Paris compare to this part, and like it's it's interesting. So people have different like perspective, different perspectives, and different levels honestly. of layers of experience, and and what they're comparing it to. And when you went to Paris, what were you able to compare it to? Your hometown. Yeah, my hometown, San Francisco. Which was San Francisco? I could compare. No, my hometown is in San Francisco, but I could compare it to San Francisco. Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, but I feel like you can't really compare cities mm-hmm. because each city has their own charm. Yeah, and like I, I haven't really met a city which I didn't like. I liked everywhere I went to. Yeah, yeah, and they all have their, their. I mean, in some places you can make a living more than others. Mm. So lots of places like will stay tourist places because like they're like beautiful to be at, mm. but there's not as many jobs to go around. Whereas some places I have have the fortune of being a hybrid of like a, a good to good place for lots to do, mm. and also like uh ample opportunities for jobs and career oh, advancement. Okay, now San Francisco has a lot yes, of opportunities. Exactly, like New York is another example. Mm. Do you like uh, the fact that there will be more job openings with the new high tech moving in yeah. next month? I think it's good. I think it means that um, more people are learning. And, and the thing is, like, it's not like that the the job market is difficult, Yeah. but it's not, it's, it's kind of, and you do, I mean, you do use some networking to get stuff, to get jobs, but there's also some meritocracy in it. Like you, you learn, you like there are a lot of developers, who, who didn't go to college or who learned it by themselves. And I like, guess yeah. there's definitely a path to, uh, to improve to trying to learn that. Of course, it's difficult if you start. It's easy when you're young and you have less financial commitments, but it gets harder if you you're older family. and you have a family and you have like the burden of that. Oh, okay. You don't have a burden there yet. Yeah. You don't have a family like, yet. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so do you think uh, men decide to have a family once they have a good job, <laughs> or do you think it happens? By I think it, I think it varies. I think a lot of times, I think a lot of times when men have a good job, they settle down. I mean, I, actually, I don't think I think I don't think a lot of people think like that. I think it's literally like the man becomes old enough that he's like he he prefers he, pre- he prefers stability with a woman versus like jumping jumping around, and then he uh, and then soon after that. They, they have a kid, a and often that happens around the time where it's a good job anyway. Like it oh. just, it just coincidentally so, where it's like. So it just matches. Yeah. Okay. It depends on the set because like, like seven, ten years is enough time to like sort of progress oh, really? from entry level to like, to a more comfortable position. Yeah. So so now that you're just uh, starting your active life, uh, do you could still consider yourself a student? No, I'm not a student. You I mean, I'm, 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 like I'm, 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 I mean, I'm a student in a different way. I, I'm going to kind of keep learning forever. Yeah. But I'm not a student in the sense that I don't. You op- I don't, you don't open the books at night. I do actually. But you do. But it, that's for fun. Oh. But I don't. I don't have to. I don't have any deadlines. I don't have any. I'm not like on Saturday and Sunday. I have it off. I mean, I I do my own work. But like as a student, it's. I mean, it's it's very different as a as an office as a formal student and an informal student. So now I'm an informal student, but. As a formal student, you have you have all these deadlines, and uh, it's different. I mean, work has deadlines too, mm-hmm. but it's it's sort of it's sort of different. It's you offer your consulting uh, abilities to your friends for free right now because I'm just trying. I'm just oh, like, you just help them. I'm just helping them. You just give your advice. Yeah. Ah, you like it? You like giving advice? Yeah, I like giving advice. I think I think everyone likes giving advice to an extent. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so there's advice you get paid for and advice that you give free. It's true. Yeah. I think uh, I think it's good to practice giving advice to, and like regardless, it's always good to like people are very thankful, and that's a kind of payment that's not financial, but oh. it's something that they they they'll it's like, remember it's a pay- you payment later. Payment gratitude, yeah. What do you put on your LinkedIn consultant, or you put students looking I put for con- alumni from Stanford looking for a job? Oh, I, I didn't I didn't say looking for a job, but I say looking, alumni. And I also I'm, I'm looking for consulting. Yeah, and I'm 
not necessarily because it's open. I might become a developer. Oh. I'm learning some programming. Yeah. And uh, I'm also doing an internship right now. It's un- it's unpaid, but it's um, it's part time. And you so get but, experience. Yeah, it's about yeah to get experience about three days a week in, in Palo Alto. Nice, nice. Yeah. This way you don't lose the hang of it. Exactly. Ah, that's good. This way you 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 discipline to get up early, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Um. So um. Do you know how to do apps? Not or yet. N- not, not yet. Oh, not you're yet. learning. Learning. Yeah, I'm taking a class too. Oh, nice. What class are you taking? I'm taking uh, uh, 14 uh, modules to learn how to do websites, landing page, and how to monetize a site. Because I'm tired of asking everybody, and so I'm going to learn it myself. That makes sense. It takes... Like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to learn online, and it's really cheap. Code Academy is free. I use it. Oh, really? Yeah. What's it called? Code Academy. Code? Code Academy. So see Code Academy. Yeah, Coursera, Coursera is also free. Hmm. Those are pretty good. Oh, I, I just, I didn't pay much anyway, but. Uh, That's good, yeah. It's, it's, it's all video instruction. It's good. Yeah, I heard, the, but this guy is really good. He's from the UK. Hopefully he, he'll deliver. So let's talk about travel. Where do we start? Where were you born? I was born in New Zealand. New Zealand? Yeah. Paradise on Earth. It was nice, yeah. I Is don't remember. It, I don't. Remember, I don't remember it that well because I was a toddler. Oh. But I went as a tourist Do when you I was remember nine. The, the beach. When I was nine, I went there again. Then I remembered it. Oh. Okay. For a vacation, I went there when I was yeah. nine. So, so what's so beautiful about New Zealand? Um, there's a lot of nature. There's a lot of space. A lot and of there's space. Hot springs. Really. Uh, yeah. It's like really like it's like warm, hot, hot springs, and it smells nice. Ah. So you like to to go camping? Yeah, I didn't. I haven't been camping in New Zealand, but I've been I've been camping in Australia. Yeah. That was during my time in Indonesia, though, and I've been camping in Indonesia. Yeah. And Australia, and I've been camping in California as well, actually. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. So, so the weather is good in New Zealand all the time, or is it has four seasons? Or it you has, don't it know? has four seasons, but I don't. I don't. I, I know this from reading. I don't know this from experience because okay. I don't remember. You were it. there only when it was summer. When I was a kid. When I was a kid. So. Was it summer? No, I was there for three years. I experienced all the seasons. Yes. But I was a toddler, so I, I don't remember it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but when you went back, you went in the summertime? I went in the summer, yeah. Okay. So it was warm and nice. But they do have four seasons. They do, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So what's so beautiful about New Zealand that people want to go is uh, they have the, the water. They have, they the have a lot of water sports, I guess, too. And I, I think it's, I think the main reason is nature. It's just, it's just. People and it's, love the nature. Yeah. And it's like, I guess it's quieter because it's, the population isn't as dense. So it's like it's, it's gonna a, be it's gonna be quieter than and like it's a, a country of immigrants also, right? I mean, yeah, relatively, they relatively, all yeah. came from Europe a uh, long time ago. Yeah, and then people migrate from all over the world there now. It's no, it's, it's yeah. still now it's a melting pot. Yeah. Oh, good, good. So here we go. Your toddler. Where did your parents take you? So I was a year and a half. I was in Christ uh, in Auckland, and they moved to Christchurch for a year and a half after that. To where? Christchurch. It's another city in two different cities in New Zealand. Oh, another city. So another you city. had to, you experienced another two, city. Two different cities, but I don't remember it. So my, I mean, my parents remember it, but not me. Ah. I have this videos, so I've seen the videos, but. But you don't remember. Not much. And then your parents had to travel again. Yeah, when I was three, we moved to Malaysia. Malaysia was that totally different? Yeah, I mean, I said, again, I don't remember it, but when I was five, I was in kindergarten, and that's that's sort of when my memory begins. Hmm. And then that that was fun, and but like life got better and better, and uh, my favorite time was in college. But yeah, but I started. Uh, we moved when I was five, to a new place, and then when I was yeah when I was five, we moved to a different, to our house, which I stayed, which stayed in till I was twelve. So we stayed in the same house for about seven years. Ah, till seven. That's for that's seven years. Yeah. So you could remember a little bit. Yeah, from five years old to twelve years old. So it was what a did also. you speak in Malaysia? I spoke English at home. Oh, but but okay. I spoke uh, Malay at school. Malay. So it was a different uh, alphabet? The same alphabet. So it's ah. easy to remember. And there's no, there's no tenses. So people actually learn it very easily as a second language too. Ah, good. So you remember the language then? Yeah. That's good. Congratulations. <laughs> so so here you are. How old are you now? Nine or, so or 11? No. No, no. When oh. you were in Malaysia, when you left. Oh, 12. So you were 12 and your parents say, we got to pack up our luggage again? Yeah, to Indonesia. 
That was fun. I went to a international school there, so that was a lot of fun. That was a big change. Uh, so it was two languages you learned. Yeah. So in Indonesia, my classes were in English. Mm-hmm. In Malaysia, they were in Malay. So like change of the language oh, subjects. Oh, from Indonesia, you went to Malaysia. No, Malaysia to Indonesia. Malaysia to Indonesia. But in in Malaysia, we my subjects were taught in Malay, and in Indonesia, they were taught in English. Mm. Well, because it was a it was an international school. Okay. So great. it was it was very different, and then that's where I started learning French. So oh. I started learning French when I was uh, 13 in Indonesia. Is Indonesia a lot bigger than Malaysia? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot bigger. Yeah. And the people are different? Well, yeah, the people are different. Uh, the language is similar, but it has it sounds very different, but it's like similar and different tribes. I mean different different like dialects. dialects. But I mean the language is inherently different. But the people, the people are the same pretty much or they are totally different. Well, I mean, can, if you see someone from Malaysia, someone from Indonesia, can you tell the difference? No, yes. not not from not from looking, but not from, from, from looking. talking. Mm. Yeah, not from looking. From looking, you you, you can't really you, tell. You cannot really tell. Okay, yeah. so there you are in Indonesia, readjusting <laughs> to a new territory. And what did you like about both countries? Uh, I mean, I, r- I really liked both places. Um, um, I like the fact that uh, each city is really different. So uh, when I went to, uh, so like Jakarta is very different from Bali, and like Jogja, there's like all these different cities that have th- that have their own unique uh, surroundings. Oh, and they it's, had a lot of tourists. Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting, and even Jakarta within Jakarta, there's like a lot of diversity. So I went to school in a small part of Jakarta, which was far away from like the main the main center of the town mm. which is like and it was like there were many different parts of, and then it was three hours from the beach and the beach was different too and and then hiking was three hours away it was it was really interesting they were like it was, a, it was very big and wow. it was very dense you walked to school i didn't walk to school i took a school bus oh okay so and you, you like being there till you finished high school yeah i lived in a really good compound so i lived oh. in an area where you could like we walked around freely, like there was a, there was parks. And it was, it was, it was a good area. It was a good area. Uh, your father was in the consulate, uh, traveling. No, he, he worked for. Uh, he worked for. Uh, he he sort of changed jobs, but it was made, like the same company, big group company owned, the subsidiaries. Oh. But he worked. He first worked for a car company, and then like a coal mining company. Coal mining. Okay. Yeah. So, th- so it's not the company that asked him to move. Sort of. Sort of, okay. All right, so r- you finished high school in Indonesia then? Yeah. And then... I was 18, and then I moved to California. Oh, wow. By myself. <laughs> well, my parents dropped me off, but I came. Like, I lived here by myself. Was that the culture shock? No, it was uh, It was what I expected. It was actually very similar to what I, what I had in Indonesia. It was... You, you, like, you were prepared? Yeah, because I went to an international school, so it was very... It was very similar, oh, except was except academically it was very challenging when I arrived, but like in terms of like socially it was like around the same. So the level of uh, teaching was a little bit higher. Like a lot higher because it was college and it was like Stanford, so it was like it was like you had to be up. It's pretty to hardcore, but it was it was really interesting. I ramped up quickly and. Did you have to pass a test to get in Stanford? Not officially, but the acceptance rate is really low. It's like seven percent. Mm. So I mean, you don't. There's no test, but. You have to have good grades from school to oh, even to yeah, even get they, sh- they look at the grades. Yeah, everyone had top grades, and most people were like the top student or, or second in their school. Of their school. So it was, uh, you were a good student then. Yeah. Oh, good for you. So it took you a year to catch up, or just six well, like months? Three six months. Three to six months, and you caught up. Yeah, but like two years to fully like ramp up fully, but like two or three three months, I was like adjusting a little bit, mm. which is good. I mean, two years that was not really a product of like the environment. It's more like. I d- I just ran up a lot in junior year. In my third year in Stanford, I got really good at stuff. I figured stuff out. Mm-hmm. But my first year, it was just like, it was just the first. It was just the first semester. Like it was, it was like changing to a new system. Mm. Because was uh, in, in was the, it hard to be away from home? Not really, because I I adapt really easily. Oh. So I I felt that I whenever I go to a new place, I feel at home very quickly. Normally. Oh okay. You didn't miss your friends from Indonesia or at all? A little bit. A little bit. I miss my parents too, but I. I made new friends. You made new, uh, new friends quickly, yeah. Oh, good for you, good for you. So each time you move, you 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 quickly make friends with your classmates and yeah. things like that. Yeah, definitely. And now that you're gonna work, you can make friends with your coworkers, <laughs> things definitely. like that. 
That's mm. it's always very helpful because if you're you're spending the most time with them, you don't want to you want to keep most of I think you want to keep it most of your communications in person versus on the telephone, or on Facebook. So it's good to keep in touch more with the present, and the past. It's it, you need to maintain the past too, but I think it's important to keep that in perspective. To live in the now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, other uh, since you travel quite a bit, um, did you find a, a big difference between people people? Uh, the, were they pretty much people, or were they some people were different? <laughs> I think it, it varies. Like in, in some places, like they've done a study where in different places there's a, a use uh, like a proximity, a difference in proximity. So in a crowded place, people talk closer, mm. and then like in a less crowded place, people sort of talk more further away. Like the personal space thing varies, and and in some places, you, you it's notice m- that, like not much, but like a little bit. Like in a crowded city, like in 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 like a crowded subway or train station, people, people talk closer. People are very close. Whereas in a in like a different situation, people are like a lot further. Oh, it, it varies. I it never varies. noticed yeah. that. It varies, and also, um, I guess it's like in different places, there's different norms on, on like at what point you engage a stranger. Mm. Like in some places, like every stranger talks to each other. Mm. And in some places, it's more. Um, you, you gotta talk be when introduced. You have, when, yeah, you talk when there's something important to say, or you lo- you don't talk much. Or if you lose your keys, or if yeah. you don't know, or you street. don't know directions. Yeah. Yeah. So, it so varies. It, was it hard for you to connect with French people? Not really. I, I spoke the language. Yeah. So, I so you know. spoke to your friends in the cafe. Yeah. In, you mean in France? Yeah. Yeah. How I mean, I I kind of just spoke to. I mean, in the hostel, we spoke in English because most people are tourists. But oh. with other people from different parts of Par- France, I spoke to them in French. Really. And I I kind of used French around the town, and it was it was fine. Mm-hmm. So it was I mean, of course, like, because my French isn't as good as my English, like the conversations couldn't be as like deep because mm. my because of the language barrier. But like, it was still um, was very. Uh, we had like long two three hour conversations, so it was good. Ah, oh, nice. So you had a chance to practice. Yeah. And uh, so you liked French people? They were nice to you. Yeah, they were. Oh, good. <laughs> so so basically, uh, most countries you have been to, most people were nice. Yeah, I think people are nice in general. In every I, I country, I think in most places people like want to be nice. I think it, I think like sometimes a, like a crime rate can affect the way people like are afraid of strangers and stuff like, like subconsciously. But I think deep down everyone wants to be nice, mm. and it's just like it's just whether that wins over fear, and like so I think especially if especially if they know yeah. you're tourists, you're not competing yeah, with them you, on you're, the you're job. <laughs> <laughs> if you are welcoming, like people are generally very nice to you. Mm. Yeah. But if. If you were, for example, in a work situation, there'll be more like a little bit of office politics to try to get the promotion. I'm not quite sure. I haven't worked before, so I haven't worked much before, so I, I uh, haven't, I haven't experienced where office pe- politics where there's yet. Ma- maybe there's people yeah. in competition in an office uh, environment. Mm-hmm. No. There might be. I, I, I mean, I've heard there is, but I haven't experienced it from. I haven't had any experience of it yet, just because yeah. I haven't had a full time job. So. But also, as a consultant, you're independent from all the other projects. I mean, you work, you're. You have a, you have a, they ask you to give your opinion on some things. You don't have to compete with um, an engineer next door, for example. It's totally two different jobs. But it, I mean, they p- have to pick the they pick one consultant or one team. They don't pick everyone. So oh, they get a they oh. to compete on price or quality, but a bit of both. But okay, and um, and as a consultant, doesn't mean you know more than the engineer. It means that you're going to give your perspective on how to make the project work. Is that what your job is? Well, I don't have a job now, but no, no, as, a as a consultant, is that what your job is? You're not going to compete with yeah, the engineer, exactly. right? Your your job is totally separate. Well, a lot, of, a lot. Of, if, I mean, if you're, often if you're consulting for an engineering project, you'll have former engineers on the team because the knowledge helps. Hmm. Yeah. So, so I mean, it depends because there's a lot. Of, there's like different elements of competition. There's like a price, so you might still be competing, but in a, it's like. They could they could be complementary. They don't have to be like, separate from each other. Okay, and you don't need to really compete. I mean, you have your job. I have my job. We both do our jobs. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and the in general, in general, I'm not talking every time. But the general, in general, the consultant to report to who? They usually have a a partner. I mean, they usually refer to the most senior person in the firm. Like normally, it's senior oh. management. Oh, okay. Because the people who hire the consultants. Hmm. Okay, so they want uh, maybe uh, an extra 
feedback from exactly the- normally do it for an independent perspective mm. on the matter because often people who work at the company they see the same results every time so they're a bit they're inherently they they're inherently different. they're inherently biased it's hard to be objective when you see the same same when, when you, when, yeah, when you when yeah, when you see something and everyone in the same company sees the same thing, whereas when you put a, a bunch of fresh people on there, they all are like all, not they are not even going to think exactly the same. Like those people are likely to think differently because they like they're not biased by the old. They're way. not biased by the the day to day day routine. Exactly. And so, because you are so freshly uh, graduate, you have a new some new things you might bring. So many things. Yeah, exactly. You you know what's the, like wh- I mean, what's what's good about being young is you 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 know the the mo- the newest uh, items. You know the new, the newest trends in development. Oh. And I mean, and also it's good. You it's it's a good uh, background for later. A lot of companies don't just hire you because of your potential. They also hire you because of I mean, not just your potential to come to to work hard and or to know stuff. Mm. They also hire you for your potential to like leave the company later, join other companies, and then like know that about the system in the other company and help them later. Mm. That's why that's like goodwill is like a big thing that people don't think about much sometimes, but it's a it's a big part of the hiring process, and mm. why companies, uh, the way companies train young people is often links to the goodwill for the future. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, typically, the the job of a consultant is very short. Then, after they got your opinion, they don't need you anymore. Yes, but uh, they usually get a new client pretty easily. So the the every gig is pretty short, like probably two months to six months. Mm-hmm. I mean, it depends also on the case. So if you're doing a finan- if you're doing a case which is not very regulated, yeah, it it's pretty fast. But if you're doing if you're tackling healthcare, like. Mm-hmm. It if could it, be complicated. It could be ten years. It could be five years because like a new drug gets in the market that takes a long time. Mm. But often, if a consultant's doing that, it'll have some other cases to work on as well because it's like they'll. But so you work for a firm who send you on different projects. Yes. That's the way it works. Yeah. So you are now affiliated with different consulting firms. No, you have one consulting firm, but that consulting firm need has to place cl- has you. different clients. And they need to find something for you. Yeah, but normally it's a whole team of people, not just one consultant. But they'll, they'll find So it's like working for a temp agency. Because but, but, but you get the benefits. You get full-time benefits. Full-time benefits of oh, of being the a full-time consulti- employee. Yeah, of the consulting firm. And they oh. often have a strong, they often have an alumni network as well. So you're officially a member of the consulting firm once you start your first consulting assignment. Well, they train you for a while, but as soon as you start, you're a member of the firm, even during training. Yeah. So, did you pick one yet? Me? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have a job yet. No, no, but did you pick a, a company that would send you to different jobs? Like I, I, I looked into a few of them, yeah. I, uh, a few, I applied to a few consulting companies, and I might apply to a few more in the future. Yeah, it's this way they decide where they're going to send you, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, oh. you have, you have, it's often a debate. No, it's often a negotiation, not, like a de- not a decision by either party. So, you might list your top few choices, and they might do the same. Mm. And then it'll staff you on something that's uh, available. No. Often they'll they'll have two or three available projects, and you pick your favorite one. Mm. They they might do that to you, and but first they gotta accept you as a consultant. Yeah, they have a bunch of interviews to do that. Yeah. And how do they make a decision? Let's say there's a hundred Stanford graduate. How do they decide how many of these they're gonna put on the team? And they pick people with work experience. From oh, before, with, with some, uh, yeah, and also they when they do a practice case interviews, they give you a case, and you you run through the case the way you you would probably do with a client, and wow. they kind of test you through that. They do. Yeah. Huh. So so if you do your first assignment and it's successful, and they see the company is progressing, then they send you on another one. Well, they kind of commit to keeping you for a while once they sign you. Oh, okay. Because I mean the interview process is pretty mm. rigorous, mm. so it's rare that they get someone who, who doesn't, who doesn't end up being up to par. Okay, okay. So because they they te- they, they talk to you, see what's your level of uh, knowledge, then once they decide, yeah, this guy can do this, yeah. then they say. And okay. I mean, and they ramp you up as well. So in the beginning, you don't have as much responsibility. Like after two or three months, you ramp up pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. But they say. 
I don't mean to <laughs> to diminish uh, the the education yeah. system, but they say after let's say after you leave school, you forget eighty percent of what you learn uh, progressively. Uh, do, do you feel that you are forgetting what you learned? I mean, I wouldn't say you forget what you learn. I would say that you don't directly apply it. Okay. But I mean, you might not directly apply it in your job, but I think you still apply it in life. Okay. For I mean, for example. Uh, is there something you learned that you forgot? Not really. I, I like to try to keep in touch with things I learned. Oh. I think when people, by that, I mean, by that saying, does have its does have its roots, and I think it's you use it's, maybe you twenty percent of what you learn on, on, on the, the job, job on the job. So oh, okay. A lot. Of, so basically, what but you're saying is the rest is in the back of your mind. Yeah. Oh, you might use it in day to day life. Like for example, if you study economics and you yeah. study, but let's say you study development economics and you yeah. learned about, or you study. Um, philosophy of psychology mm -hmm. or anything you study it stays it's, in there it stays in there and it's interesting and then when you when you like live your day-to-day -day lives when you talk to people you use you, you break on the knowledge you use and then when you're making life decisions you use the knowledge oh. maybe on the day-to-day -day job you don't use it yeah. and so, so, good, they, so you have to retrain yourself yeah you, you have to learn some new skills for the job but th those your skills you learned in college yeah are still very useful because they are in the back of your yeah, mind yeah and, and, and you need to use them for other decisions you make for communication skills yeah yeah uh, most uh, well, so I think I think what, what go that goes back to is that a college like education it's not it doesn't it does it's not the only preparation you need more than that for a, for a job preparation mm -hmm. but it but it's not like useless like it's it's very useful it's just that that's not enough alone it's by you itself. as a person will yeah. utilize it the most yeah and okay so because anyway when you have a college education the first two years are just general topics right and then you specialize in something. It depends on the college. Like in Stanford, it was uh, you could specialize from the first year. Oh, really? But like you, I mean, you had to declare, you had to decide by the third year. Oh. But even from the first year, you already start taking classes for oh. your for your for main for your, you for your main specialization, your major. Yeah. Um, but you can also even up to your senior year, your last year, you can still uh, take some general classes okay. it's, as long as you plan your schedule. Mm -hmm. And actually, there is if you decide, there's a disadvantage from deciding too late. If you decide too late. You have to cramp up your subjects and, and work really hard in the last two years. Oh. So people who decide early actually have a big advantage in terms of if they start in earlier yeah, to in terms decide. Of planning. Oh, did you plan good? Yeah. Are you did? Well. I, I I knew I was going to study economics going in. Yeah. I, mean, I was open to change and I tried some degree things, but I ended up sticking with economics. Economics. Yeah, for my bachelor's degree. Oh, that's nice. So, so besides your bachelor, you have a master. Yeah, in management science and engineering. Oh, nice, nice. That was tough, right? Yeah. Was it tough? It was, but it was fun as well. Oh. I learned a lot, and I'm glad that. Oh, now you're decompressing. You. Yeah. Well, I was. I already decompressed. Now I'm, I'm recompressing. I'm learning some new things again. I'm learning software oh. development okay. by myself. Okay. So that's uh, interesting. That's but always good to have too. This yeah. way, if you speak to an engineer on your next job, you know what he's talking about. Exactly. <laughs> it's very available to combine different skills. Yeah, so it's good that you have that uh, mind that. Always, always learning and, yeah. and keeping up to date with the new, new languages, new technologies, everything. There's so much that pops up every year, anyway. I mean, can you keep up? I mean, there's so many new things invented in technology, uh, like with the iPhone, with the Android. I mean, there's always new application. New That's things. true. I think it's just you need to keep up with the general theme of things. Like for example, at smart when smartphones were new, the main thing was touch screens to an extent. Yeah. And at some point, it became that well, Siri on the phone, like a, a voice system to change oh, from voice, voice to text. Yes, this voice so to text. So I think you just need to keep in touch with the main, the main, the main sort of thing. The main trends. Yeah, the main trends. You don't have to keep in touch with like each gadget. And Kindle was like the Amazon Kindle. Mm. The main thing about that is like l really long battery life, portable books. And now it's audio. A lot of yeah. audio now. They exactly. added. Exactly. They added uh, Audible. Yeah. Amazon bought Audible, and you can buy a whole bunch of books audio. And that's that's very helpful. It, it takes away that when people come to work, they want to listen. Sometimes. They can just listen to the book. Yeah. That's awesome, isn't it? I know it helps a lot. Yeah. Did you More buy options. a few? Did you buy? A few? I'm actually I speed read, so I read very fast. Really. So I don't like uh, listening to things because it feels very slow to me. Oh really? Me, it's the opposite. I fall asleep after one page, so the audio thing is. My oh, thing. that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think what technology really does is like it's, it makes things more flexible. So it appeals to, to that different people. products to appeal to many different people. Yeah, the, some have audio more developed, and others have the visual more, visual more, more developed. Yeah, exactly. So you gotta 
So when you're going to work, you got to see who you're working with, too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If they prefer audio, they send them an audio file. If they prefer reading, you send them a, email, a, yeah. an email. So anyway, it was very, very interesting uh, to talk to you. So we're going to now switch to French, okay. like I promised. <laughs> <laughs> And that will give you not only an opportunity to practice, but also give uh, the people who are listening a chance to, to hear French. Okay. Donc, euh, nous avons aujourd'hui avec nous Ganesh. Est-ce que Raj, ça fait partie de ton nom de famille? Non, c'est partie de mon prénom. Ah, c'est Ganesh Raj. Oui. Ah, je, mais je me suis trompée alors quand je t'ai présenté en anglais. Alors, c'est Ganesh. Ah, c'est, c'est, c'est fin. Normalement, euh, pour, euh, tes amis Tout, Mes amis par, euh, m'a, m'appellent Ganesh. Ah, ils disent Raj. Oui. Et Raj, ça veut dire monsieur Non, c'est un, un parti de mon prénom, c'est de nom. De... Ah, comme Jean-Marc, par exemple Jean-Marc. Oui, oui, comme ça. D'accord. Jean-François, Jean. Oui. <rire> They put Jean in front of everything in France. <rire> OK. Donc, euh, c'est très courant dans ton pays de mettre le mot Raj. Um, Raj, non. ça va après c'est, c'est, c'est comme... Euh, c'est comme un uh, king. Ah, c'est vrai? Oui. Tu es un roi? Oui. Tu non, m- 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 moi, non. Oui, mais je sais, mais ça veut mais dire ma- que la tu norme, es... c'est, Le nom, c'est un roi. C'est le nom d'un roi? Oui. Ah, alors quand tu mets Raj, ils ont... Ils Gan- Ganesh, c'est un, un uh, god. Et c'est vrai? Et uh, Raj, c'est un uh, roi. Oui. Un roi, donc tu es un dieu et un roi. Oui. Oh là là, t- <rire> tes parents t'ont vraiment euh, valué, t'ont vraiment donné une valeur tout, tout de suite oui. dans ton nom. Oui. <rire> Donc, si on traduisait ton prénom, tu serais le dieu et le roi. Oui. C'est adorable, ça. <rire> Donc, euh, est-ce que tu sens que tu mérites ce nom Est-ce que tu as cette... Euh, cette... Euh, impression que tu pourrais être euh, un, un guide pour les autres. Je pense que oui, parce que c'est, c'est ça me donne euh, de, c'est l'esprit, 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 pour, de... l'esprit de, um, de faire beaucoup avec ma vie. Mmh, c'est bien, ça oui. te donne de la confiance. Oui. C'est, c'est super le nom qu'ils t'ont donné tes parents. <rire> Merci. Donc, euh, mais la plupart des gens euh, aux États-Unis ne savent pas que Ganesh, ça veut dire euh, Dieu. Oui, mais Ils à San Francisco, c'est, c'est différent. C'est, c'est à San Francisco, c'est très... Oui, il y a beaucoup de, de oui. gens d'Inde. Mais, mais euh, les, les gens entre eux savent, savent ça? parce que beaucoup des gens euh, lisent des, euh, des, des informations des autres cultures. C'est vrai? Et des, Moi, des, des gens de yoga ou euh, euh, lire un peu ah bon. des autres. Moi, je ne savais pas. Voilà. Mm. Je, peut-être que je suis ignorante, mais je ne savais pas parce que je n'ai jamais appris cette langue. Euh, et, mais à Salesforce, il y a beaucoup de gens qui, tra- qui sont d'Inde et qui travaillent à Salesforce, je les vois. Oui. Parce qu'ils <rire> engagent les développeurs qui sont d'Inde. Oui. D'ailleurs, il y a, je crois qu'il y a un cartel de, de CEO qui encourage de faire venir les les ingénieurs d'autres pays pour, euh, pour faire le travail. Ah oui, c'est bien. <rire> oui. Comme euh, je crois qu'il y en a plusieurs. Il y a, il y a Bill Gates, il y a... Enfin, ils, se, ils ont demandé euh, qu'on augmente le nombre euh, d'immigrants pour euh, faire le travail. Oui. C'est bien. Oui. <rire> Donc, euh, il y aura beaucoup de... J'espère qu'il y aura beaucoup, encore des réformes d'immigration bientôt aussi. Euh, donc, toi, tu pourras rester bientôt, en, en permanence, si, si Dieu veut, <rire> si Ganesh <Yannèche> veut, <rire> si, que tu pourras trouver donc euh, quelqu'un qui te sponsorise, c'est ça Oui. Voilà, c'est, c'est comme ça que ça marche. Un an après que tu as fini tes études, tu peux rester si tu as du travail. Ah, um, c'est difficile de rester sans travail Oui. Je ne peux, donc, je, ah, fais, je, fais, je fais travail maintenant. Ah, tu sais, c'est, 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 je fais un internship. Ah, d'accord. Trois jours par semaine. D'accord, pour pouvoir rester. Oui. Ah, c'est bien ça. Et nous, j'apprends beaucoup euh, en aussi même temps, à, le, en même à le même temps, temps oui. Mm. Donc, euh, et, et ce que tu fais comme, euh, comme euh, internship, euh, comme stage, 
C'est en relation avec ce que tu as appris ou bien c'est tout à fait différent C'est euh, une combination. Ah oui Donc, euh, c'est euh, beaucoup de business et je, je l'apprends ça. Mais euh, j'apprends beaucoup de nouvelles software que je n'utilise. Que tu n'as jamais appris à l'école Avant, oui. Mm. Comme SQL et R. C'est difficile Non, c est, c est, ce n'est pas difficile. Non, non. Okay. Donc, tu as quand même une base mathématique alors tu oui. comprends le. C'est un peu. On, on utilise. On peut comprendre la logique. Ah, tu, tu as, la, tu as des ça en, déjà oui. ça en base. Si on comprend la logique, euh, c'est plus facile de l'apprendre. Ah, d'accord. Et c'est par exemple euh, 10, 10 heures de, de, de cours ou... Oui, oui. Voilà. Euh, Peut-être 10 heures. 5 heures, un heure, deux, deux heures, mm -hmm. on apprend beaucoup. Beaucoup, et après et tu pratiques. Euh, après 5 heures, 10 heures, on, on peut, on, pratique. on meilleur. Oui, on pratique. Oui. Mm -hmm. Donc tu es au stage de pratique, là oui, je, euh, Pour SQL, je, je déjà comprends ça. Euh, tu, tu fais la théorie d'abord Oui, je, je comprends ça. Euh, mais bien, j'ai je, 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 déjà pratique et j'ai déjà fini le rapport. Tu as déjà fini le rapport Oui. Ah, d'accord. Tu as fait un ou deux programmes tu as, tu as déjà écrit des programmes en oui, SQL Oui, oui, oui. Ah, Beaucoup. D'accord. Donc, euh, ça t'occupe. <rire> Comme oui. ça, tu t'ennuies pas toute la journée. <rire> oui. D'accord. Alors, euh, ta dernière euh, ville a été San Francisco, que tu as où tu as voyagé, n'est-ce pas Oui. Alors, on va faire ça en, en arrière, avec, en français. C'est-à-dire, on va commencer par San Francisco et puis on va aller en arrière vers le, la... <rire> Parce qu'en anglais, on a fait oui. où tu as commencé, quand, où quand tu as fini. Il y a des, des, bars, des bars en français, oui. en français en Fran à Paris, oui. à la quartier latin, oui. à le souterrain. Oui. On, on descend et c'est intéressant parce que ce n'est pas un... un ce n'est pas... C'est beaucoup d'efforts euh, pour... Euh, pour... Euh, Bon, l'environnement le, mm -hmm. de ce bar. Mm -hmm. Et San Francisco, il y a beaucoup de bars comme ça aussi. Et tu vas Tu On, vas oui, 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 euh, le, le bar, oui, oui, je vais à ce, ce, ce bar. Oui, ça s'appelle comment Comme Two Sisters, c'est un bar à Hayes Valley. Oui, euh, bien. Il y a beaucoup de, de livres. Des étudiants Des, des livres. C'est un bar, mais on peut lire, lire ah. quand on voit. C'est un, un bar ou un café Un bar. C'est un bar où il y a des livres. Oui. C'est drôle, ça. C'est pas, la, la pas, pas normal, ça. C'est pas normal, oui. Il y a beaucoup de bars comme là, ce qui ce n'est pas normal, mais c'est intéressant. Une nouvelle trend. Un nouvel trend. Nouvelle trend. Oui. Ah, d'accord. Parce que je sais qu'il y a des cafés où il y a des magazines, euh, comme dans Hayes, you know. Oui, oui. <rire> mais... Des bars où on lit, c'est l'opposé, parce que des bars, c'est pour boire. <rire> oui, oui, oui. Mais euh, c'est une nouvelle idée. C'est une, une, une nouvelle il a, vague. Oui, il y, a beaucoup de, il y a beaucoup de bars ici, donc si le bar seulement pour il boire, c'est très ennuyé pour les gens de... Qui ont intellect, sont intellectuels, oui. Ou on, 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 ennuyé uh, vite si tous les bars le même. Ah, donc il y a de les lumières, alors Oui. Est-ce qu'ils allument les lumières pour que tu puisses lire Oui, mais ce n'est pas, pas très... Beaucoup de gens ne lisent pas. Ah. pas Ou tu veux, pour, si tu veux, si tu veux. Et c'est beaucoup pour la, la décoration. Mm. Et peut-être que si on livre, on ne, on ne lit pas très long. On lit euh, peut-être et après on um, fait conversation avec des amis. Ah oui, que penses-tu des nouveaux styles de café où il y a common area workspace, tu sais que penses-tu de ce trend Les gens vont travailler et aussi ils vont boire le café et... Je pense que c'est euh, un bon trend parce que beaucoup de temps, euh, on, peut, on ne, ne doit pas aller à l'office. Mm. Mais si on reste à la maison, c'est... On s'ennuie. C'est ennuie et quelquefois, il, y a, il, il, il fait un aim oui. qu'il y a des gens, des autres gens dans l'environnement. Dans l'environnement, c'est fait bien. Ça donne de l'énergie. Oui. Et euh, c'est bien de prendre des restes. On, on peut rester. On peut tu travailles dans un common space Oui. Oui. Un, oui. Tu, tu non, dois... euh, maintenant, dans mon office, euh, c'est un office. Dans... Ah oui, c'est un bureau. Mais, mais euh, c'est un bureau. Mais euh, les gens dans ce bureau euh, euh, font conversation beaucoup. C'est un bon environnement. Ah, c'est un bon... Euh... Oui, oui. Les gens n'ont pas peur de parler. 
Oui, on ne peut pas dire beaucoup, c'est bien. Ah, attends, vous avez changé des idées. Changé des idées. Je n'ai pas les, le, le bureau qui il y a des, oui. des murs, des murs entre, entre, le, entre les gens. Entre les gens, ça c'est par les gens. Oui. Yeah. Les dans, cubicles, c'était l'ancien oui, je... système. Oui, mon, mon bureau, il n'y a pas des, des murs cubicles. entre les. les Mais entre si les... tu veux parler en privé avec quelqu'un, tu vas au, aux toilettes Non, 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 il y a des des, 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 des des privés. Ah, il y a un endroit privé. Endroit privé, mais deux, deux ou trois endroits privés, mais ce n'est pas, pas, pas pour... Pas toute la journée. Oui. De temps en temps, tu meeting. dois parler à ta femme. On hein. peut, qui, si on veut dire uh, deux ou trois personnes, aller à ce, mm. ce room, like, ce... C'est pas possible. <rire> c'est pas possible. Ce n'est pas tous les journées on rester... Non, à... bien sûr. C'est juste pour une conversation oui. privée avec ton manager ou une conversation privée avec... Uh, euh, quelqu'un de la famille ou, alors. Oui. Donc, euh, ou bien tu vas dehors hein, tu peux aller dehors si tu veux faire une conversation privée <rire> donc c'est ça c'est ça un des problèmes des coworking spaces il n'y a rien privé oui. euh, tu manges, tout le monde sait ce que tu manges tu, <rire> tu ouvres ton sac tout le monde sait ce qu'il y a dans ton sac c'est un peu ça oui. tout le monde sait <rire> ce que tu fais un peu enfin oui. ils ne ils vont pas t'espionner mais euh, plus ou moins il, tu n'as rien à cacher c'est transparent <rire> oui oui <rire> D'accord. Mais de toute façon, toi, tu n'as rien à cacher, n'est-ce pas tu, ouais. tu, tu fais tout naturellement euh, et, te, et tu partages tes idées avec tout le monde, etc. Oui, j'aime partager les idées. D'accord. Ouais. Et ta compagnie euh, qui t'a offert le stage, euh, bien que c'est pas payant, c'est une start-up Oui, une start-up à Palo Alto. Ah, c'est super. Qu'est-ce qu'ils font euh, Ils euh, euh, aident les, les, business, les business de... Oui. Les compagnies d'organiser ces goals, ces projets, ces idées euh, meilleures. Ah, ces pour goals. mieux s'organiser. Oui, mieux or, euh, organiser ces goals. Ah, ces... mieux organiser leurs buts. Oui, leur, oui. Leurs objectifs. Les objectifs, oui. Ah, c'est sûr. Avec software, oui. Ah, c'est intéressant. Avec un software Oui, avec euh, ces software, donc. Euh, ah, vous avez inventé un software pour mieux organiser les oui. idées oui, ces compagnies euh, invitées, ces software pour... Euh, J'ai rencontré euh, mercredi quelqu'un qui a une start-up euh, pour aider les étudiants à finir leurs études. Parce que quand on va à l'université, il n'y a que 21 à 25 qui finissent, qui finissent jusqu'au bout. Oui. Comme toi, tu as fini jusqu'au bout. Et le reste, euh, drop out. Ils oui. vont jusqu'à la deuxième année, la troisième année la moitié de la quatrième, mais jamais ils vont jusqu'au graduation. Oh. Donc, lui, il a un software euh, qui permet euh, aux étudiants, de, depuis le début, de faire leurs objectifs pour aller jusqu'au bout, pour aller à, à la graduation. Parce que des gens, ils commencent, les étudiants, ils ne savent pas où ils vont. Ils, euh, finalement, ils n'aiment ils, ils ils, ils pas l'école, ils s'en vont. Oui, oui. <rire> Donc, il n'y a que 22% qui vont finir l'école. Donc, ce n'est pas beaucoup. Le pourcentage euh, est très bas, les gens qui finissent comme toi. Oui, oui. Donc, euh, lui, l'objectif de son software, c'est que les gens, plus de gens finissent euh, jusqu'à la graduation. <rire> tu as ah, compris Oui, as oui, compris? je comprends. Je, comprends. De, et, je et, comprends, oui. Et moi, ce que je ne comprenais pas, j'ai dit, comment un software peut faire ça C'est dans la tête de l'étudiant, ce n'est pas dans un software. Oui. <rire> Donc, euh, je ne sais pas comment il va organiser son software, mais c'est pour que dès le début, l'étudiant veut finir en, pour qu'il puisse continuer jusqu'à la et aller jusqu'au jusqu bout. Ah oui, je, je comprends, c'est bien. Oui. Voilà, donc c'est un peu en relation avec ce que tu fais pour que les gens finissent leurs objectifs atteignent oui, leurs oui. objectifs. Et euh, n'est pas seulement fini, mais on, on connaît les objectifs de des collègues, des amis. Ah, de, euh, de savoir quels sont, oui. si c'est en rapport avec les objectifs de la personne à côté. Oui, oui. Ah, d'accord. C'est un software assez compliqué, ça. Oui, oui. Donc, c'est... Chaque employé de dire quel est son objectif. Oui, il y a beaucoup de, des ingénieurs qui, qui... Euh, créent ces... Ah oui? Oui. Ça doit être très intéressant, ça, de comment savoir comment tout le monde aille dans, le même, dans la même direction. Oui. Je ne sais pas si tu as lu le livre de Steve Jobs. Ils ont dit, ils disaient, chaque année, ils ont des milliers d'idées. 
Et il se, se rend compte, je, bon, c'est pas moi qui ai dit ça, hein, j'ai rencontré quelqu'un qui m'a dit, et une fois par an, il se rencontre et il décide de se concentrer sur cinq produits. Ils ne vont pas tout faire, parce que c'est impossible de tout faire. Alors, ils disent, voilà, on va faire ça, 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 pour cette année, c'est tout. On ne va pas aller de tout, tous les sens et aller nulle part. Oh, oui, oui. Tu vois ce que je veux dire Oui, je ne comprends pas. Tu n'as pas compris Oui, est-ce que tu veux... Voilà. J'ai dit... Euh, euh, chez Apple, il y a beaucoup d'idées, mais ils vont dans un meeting une fois par an, un camp, et ils décident où, dans quel produit, quel produit ils vont développer, et le reste, ils ne vont, vont pas se concentrer ah, oui, oui. pour que toute la compagnie aille dans la même direction. Oui. Parce que si tout le monde va dans sa direction, oui, oui. et après, euh, on ne sait pas où on va. Oui, c'est un peu, si on, on peut comprendre les objectifs de la compagnie, c'est très... C'est très important. Mm -hmm. Et euh, le software, c'est de, de, de faire ça. Parce que c'est euh, souvent dans les grandes compagnies. Oui, chacun il veut faire chaque, ce qu'il chaque veut. Chacun, euh, oui, il ne comprend pas la même chose. Mm. Parce que. Euh, Lui, il veut faire ça, l'autre, oui. il veut faire ça. On, on a rencontré beaucoup. Dans une, une, une petite compagnie, tous les gens le connaissent. Donc, c'est facile. De... Oui, mais dans une grosse boîte, c'est pas possible. C'est difficile. Oui. D'accord. Donc, c'est un peu ça ce que tu fais. Tu sais que les gens aillent dans la même direction. Oui. D'accord. Et qui décide dans votre compagnie, en, dans, qui décide la direction de la compagnie le Je site. pense que tous les gens. Parce que, euh, dans, à mon avis, ouais. dans les, les premières compagnies, mmh. euh, les, tous les gens, tous les employés décident de... Ce qu'ils veulent faire. Oui. Parce que... Euh, Premier, euh, en particulier à la, euh, la, la, le, sta, le, le début mm -hmm. de la compagnie, parce que si, on, si les, les, euh, les employés, les employés, euh, les employés avant oui. euh, n'ont pas décidé, ouais. on, euh, Personne perdu, ne sait. on perdu la, la, la motivation pour le travail. Oui, oui. Donc je pense que les premières compagnies sont. Euh, tout, les premiers euh, tout, qui arrivent doivent décider. Euh, sou, souvent, tous les gens décider la direction la de direction de où tout le monde va oui. marcher le CEO euh, à, la, à la fin peut être oui ou non peut mm. dire oui ou non mais euh, pour la plupart des décisions c'est tous les gens mm. d'accord oui. d'accord et disons les dix premiers vont décider la direction de la compagnie oui mm. et, et tu aimes ça tu aimes quand c'est certaines personnes qui décident ce n'est pas tout le monde qui va décider. Je pense que tous les gens do, euh, doivent, euh, doivent euh, faire les idées. Mais un, un, Il doit avoir un, un consensus. Oui, hein. mais un person, non, non, consensus, c'est très, 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 très difficile. Ouais. Mais tous les gens euh, peuvent peu, euh, discuter des idées. Ouais. Et une personne peut décider, ou deux personnes. Mm. Euh, Quelqu'un fait de la recherche, ils disent, voilà, ça, oui, ça a, vaut. Après, tous les gens disent ses opinions. C'est ah. très important. Je, je, le je feedback pense. de chacun, d'abord oui. avant de prendre les Je décisions. Je pense que c'est très euh, important. Ah, d'accord, d'accord. Oui. Par exemple, si le boss il dit on va, on va se concentrer sur ça et quelqu'un d'autre dit non. Oui. Euh, non, dire, parce que parce dit, que, oui. dit les raisons. Oui, il va dire parce qu'il n'y a pas assez de mar euh, marché ou il n'y a pas assez de... Si, euh, il doit avoir des bonnes raisons. Oui. <rire> oui, alors c'est passionnant tout ça, d'essayer de, euh, les compagnies à avoir une direction. C'est très important ça. Oui. Et, et toi, ton rôle, c'est de leur donner ton opinion. Non, je, pour, pour moi, je analyse le data, le data mm. à la, la manière de la produit et utilise par ah. les clients. Ouais. Et euh, une aussi, elle aussi, je, je l'analyse la productivité des employés ah. à la, la compagnie. Ah, d'accord. Oui. <rire> On a fini par parler d'un sujet différent. Dans la partie en français. Oui. <rire> Mais c'est pas grave, de toute façon. Je suis sûre que tout le monde comprend l'anglais, donc ils ont tous compris ton voyage. <rire> oui, oui. <rire> et, oui. et par contre, en français, c'est un peu plus compliqué, mais c'est normal parce que c'est en français de toute façon. <rire> oui, oui. <rire> voilà. Donc, ça, ça match euh, le, la langue, oui. de ce dont on parle. D'accord. <rire> donc, là, tu es dans un job euh, depuis trois mois, peut-être, hein, ou deux mois. Et je ne sais pas. Je, il n'y a pas de femme. Euh, après, je cherche un travail qui paye ah. 
C'est peut-être que j'ai fini les le projets que je, je que fais. Que tu as commencé. Je commence et après ça, je fais mon, mon euh, nouveau euh, ton travail. Nou ton nouveau travail, d'accord. Oui. Non, mais les gens qui t'ont donné le stage, c'est un stage de deux mois il n'y a pas oh, euh, le stage euh, ce il n'y a, pas, il y a de, pas de durée de temps de, de durée j'ai déjà parlé avec le ah d'accord ils n'ont oui. pas dit dans il, deux mois c'est flexible et il m'aide beaucoup ah. et je fais des et toi tu les aides ok oui et je fais des travail pour 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 leur et et il euh, m'aide beaucoup ah, aussi parce qu'il comprend comprend mon situation mm. c'est j'aime ai, travailler pour le, leur mais parce que ce n'est pas payé oui. Je dois chercher les... Tu dois faire de la recherche Oui, je dois chercher les... Euh, travail avec paix. Est-ce que c'est une foreign start-up C'est une compagnie... Non, non, c'est une compagnie de Palo Alto. Oui, mais, de Palo Alto. Mais, mais les fondateurs sont d'un pays étranger ou d'Amérique Je pense que étranger. Ils se sont des, des fondateurs d'un pays étranger Oui. D'accord. Donc, eux non, aussi... Non, il y a, il y a des, des gens... Euh, il y a beaucoup d'américains à l'intérieur de, de la de la et il y a de, des étrangers aussi ah d'accord d'accord ça vous vous accordez ça va oui oui <rire> il n'y a pas trop de, de clash de différence de culture d'accord donc euh, là tu es tu es bien tu travailles trois jours de les deux autres jours tu, tu... je cherche le travail je, je écris mon cover letter et je appris le coding et tu apprends le coding à, à l'internet ah, Mais à l'office, je prends le coding aussi. Comme ça, ça aussi, te donnera oui. un peu plus de qualifications. Oui. Quand tu vas demander. Et j'ai fait des, des interviews aussi avec la compagnie. Ah oui, bien sûr, parce que aussi, il faut que tu penses au futur. Oui. D'accord. D'accord. Donc là, tu es là depuis un mois à San Francisco. Et, et c'est un endroit où tu veux rester si tu travailles Oui, j'adore je, 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 San Francisco, mais j'aime euh, voyage beaucoup. Peut-être que je reste ici trois ans, quatre ans, mm -hmm. peut-être deux ans, mais... Uh, je voudrais, je voudrais faire San Francisco mon bus et ah oui. après ça, je voyage là. Ah d'accord, mais tu n'envoies pas des CV à New York, si Peut-être, j'adore New York aussi, je voudrais uh, passer du temps à New York. Oui, mais tu envoies ton résumé, résumé ton CV à New York, non Oui, oui, oui. mais, mais uh, plus à San Francisco parce plus que je connais, je connais beaucoup d'amis ici. Beaucoup ici. Donc, c'est plus facile. De faire des connexions Oui. Combien de connexions tu as sur LinkedIn Uh, peut-être peut-être uh, peut-être mille 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 uh, c'est le maximum mille, mille. non on peut uh, mille one thousand dix cent c'est mille oui uh, mille c'est one thousand yeah. tu, tu as mille, 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 mille connexions connexion. plus de mille et combien de groupes peut-être uh, vingt 20 groupes et c'est le maximum de groupes non, que tu peux Non, on peut euh, beaucoup. On, je, non, il y a un maximum. Je, oh oui, je, je ne connais pas ça, mais je, pour, pour connexion, il n'y a pas de maximum parce que il y a des gens qui avec euh, euh, oh, 3, de premium, 3, 300, premium plan? Non, 300 000. 300 000 C'est possible ça. Oui. C'est pas comme Facebook à 5 000, ils te coupent Facebook, c'est 5 000. Oui. Mais Facebook, mon connaissance, c'est... 2500. Non, mais de toute façon, LinkedIn, c'est pour, pour trouver du travail un peu. Oui, mais j'utilise Facebook aussi parce ah que oui? c'est que c'est plus casual à Facebook. Donc, ah oui, si, c'est des amis. Si c'est des amis, si je connais beaucoup, mm. je, uh, je vais message. Le, mais les employeurs sont Facebook. sur LinkedIn. Employés, c'est LinkedIn, mais qui je voudrais des aides de, de mes amis, je uh, contacte sur le Facebook. Sur Facebook. Et il fait connexion sur LinkedIn avec... Bon, si tu as 1000 connexions oui. et 20 groupes, chaque groupe a 1000 personnes, mais au moins, oui. un groupe de 1000 ou un groupe de 10 000, oui. tu envoies ton CV à, à chaque groupe. Oui. Et euh, il y a des... Euh, pour les connexions, oui. ils ont des connexions aussi. Donc, ah oui. Pour, si on euh, utilise trois connexions, c'est mm. plus de millions, c'est... Mille, mille, oui, mais quand tu envoies ton CV à un groupe, tu le non, groupe non, je ne, je ne, je, tu ne fais pas ça. Je, je, on peut faire ça, mais je pense que ce n'est pas bien. LinkedIn, dans le profil, c est, c est, um, on peut voir le, le CV à le profil. Oui, mais Donc, pas les membres de ton groupe, peut-être qu'ils ne oui, voient pas. pas. Euh, normalement, je, 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 je seulement euh, euh, donner mon CV à... Euh, 
à une personne par temps. Par temps. À, à Parce que c'est, c'est plus personnel. Ah, oui? on, euh, ah, oui. Normalement, à LinkedIn, on euh, n'a pas si on se, euh, splash, splash oui, euh, oui. À, à tous les gens en même temps. Non, mais si tu fais partie d'un groupe de consultants. Ah, oui, et je. Et euh, le. Il oui, y a un groupe de consultants, non Oui, sûrement. Et, oui et, il y a un groupe de le. Je, 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 je lis beaucoup. Le, le CV au je, groupe. je lis là, beaucoup les gens, le groupe de lire. Des livres sur le l'eau. Oui. Conservation de l'eau. Oui. Et, euh, et je mets LinkedIn, mon, mon groupe, ce n'est pas seulement mon carrière, c'est au, mon, intérêt, mon intérêt aussi. Mm. Donc, euh, peut-être, par exemple, j'ai un membre de groupe philosophy, mm. mais je ne voudrais pas tra- travailler comme un philosophe. Non, mais si tu as un groupe de compagnie de consultants, tu oui. envoies au groupe. Tu n'as pas besoin d'envoyer un à un. You don't need to send your CV one by one. You send it to the group of consultants. Oh, uh, ce n'est pas... Uh, c'est pas comme ça? Ce n'est pas comme ça. Parce que si comme ça, il y a trop de spam. Tu crois? Yeah. Oui. Mais... On, on, on fait l'annoncement et on peut lire ou non, mais ce n'est pas envoyé à tous les gens. Ah, d'accord. Parce que tu ne sais pas qui tu vas c'est recevoir. Co- c'est comme spam. Oui, c- oui. tu ne sais pas qui va recevoir ton CV. Oui. Ah, d'accord. Donc, quand tu fais partie d'un groupe, tu ne connais pas tout le monde dans le groupe. Non, euh... mais on peut faire des discussions. Il y a un home page de, de groupe ouais. et on peut faire des conversations. Et tous les gens peuvent lire ces conversations. Qui en... Donc, tu, c'est ça ce que tu fais Tu, tu commences je, des conversations Je n'ai déjà fait be- beaucoup, mm. mais peut-être le, le, le futur, mais l'avenir. Mais euh, c'est, c'est pas beaucoup. le meilleur c'est moyen ce n'est pas, je, selon moi, ce n'est pas le moyen de trouver. M- oui, le m- euh, meilleur moyen est de parler de, avec des gens. Et ah oui, de te connecter avec des gens qui connaissent des compagnies de consultants. Oui. Ah, d'accord. Et tu trouves ça dans, tu trouves ça où? Dans, dans um, les cafés où tu vas? Dans LinkedIn ou dans les, les, les normales les normal, euh, jours de jour. Mm-hmm. Quotidien, la ville quotidienne, on, on rencontre des gens. Oui, tu et on peut aller. Les meet-up. Voilà. Les meet-up, le networking, les événements de networking. Ah, c'est super. Et s'il si il y a un genre euh, important à LinkedIn, on peut con- connecter avec un ami qui mm-hmm. savait cette personne, peut-être. Ah. Aussi, on allait à la même école, c'est, le même collège, c'est, c'est plus facile de connecter. On peut envoyer un email et dire que nous avons le même collège. Ah. Est-ce que vous pouvez donner, me donner les. Le contact. Le, les enseignements, oui. D'accord. Donc, euh, tu as fait des progrès depuis la dernière fois que je t'ai rencontré. Oui, oui. Tu as appris beaucoup de choses. <rire> oui. D'accord. Merci. Écoute, euh, je te remercie beaucoup de, d'être, de revenir. Euh, ça a été très intéressant de te parler. Euh, c'est toujours très, très agréable de te parler. Merci. Euh, donc, euh, je te remercie à nouveau. On a parlé pendant une heure et trois minutes, donc c'est ah beaucoup. Ah oui, c'est bien. Oui, on a parlé plus que la dernière fois. <rire> donc, euh, c'était un plaisir et à très, très bientôt, j'espère. Merci beaucoup.